Welcome to the R video tutorial on One Way Anova in R part two. This is part two of a series of videos on how to do One Way Anova. We're gonna be using the Cycler CPK.CSV dataset. If you haven't watched part one, you might wanna jump back to that. Uh, the data set you'll be able to refine in uh, the description below. You'll see a link to a repository. You can get it from there. Uh, I've got it on my desktop. I've read it in. Uh, I've generated a box plot, and this is what it looks like. Uh, and then we also calculated an ANOVA, an AOV, using the AOV function. And we've got a summary, so you can see the ANOVA table down here. Now, we also did LM in there, but I'm gonna not use it in this one because we wouldn't look at, in this specific one, Tukey's test, so, or, or Tukey's HSD. So Tukey's, honestly, significant difference procedure. Okay, and it's really easy to do once you have the AOV written into a uh, object. So here I can simply do, uh, Tukey, uh, HSD, put in here, my AOV function that I've created, not function, but the AOV object that I've created, and then just put in quotes the variable which you want to look across. Now this works because maybe you're in a two-way, three-way ANOVA. If you just leave this out on a one-way ANOVA, it'll still work, but it's a good practice to put it in there. Now if I run this, I get a large output down here, and I'm gonna expand this window out a little bit. So what you can see is this gives me the differences. So I have low, high, medium, high, none, high, medium, low, none, low, none, medium. And these are the differences that it's estimated and it's estimated in a lower bound and an upper bound and an adjusted p-value. Now this p-value is corrected for type one error. So your experiment wise error rate. So these p-values are a little bit different than what you would get if you had done a pairwise t-test, which we'll talk about here in a second. So if I've done this and I use this, I can see that low and high are different, but medium and high are not different. So notice that the p-value is really high on this. And none and low really aren't different as well, but we could say that none and medium are different, medium and low are different, none and high are different, and low and high are different. And that is actually what's consistent with our picture here. Now, if we wanted to not have to read this out so such a difficult manner, uh, because you actually have to think about which is which is which, we can actually create a plot of this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna write it into an object. So I'm gonna just call this my cycler, and then I'm gonna call it Tukey. My cycler one, and then Tukey, and I'm going to write what I have my syntax above into this. So this will create an object that has the information that I want in it so that I can plot it. And you'll see what the plot looks like here in just a second. So let's say write uh, or create the Tukey object. Object. All right, now all I have to do now is just plot it. So hit plot and then cycler one dot Tukey and this should work. Let's give this a go and see what happens. And sure enough, I get a picture over here. Now, I have to look at this picture to see what's interesting about it, but any of these bands here, these upper and lower bands that cross zero, this dotted line here, are not different. Anything that's away from zero on either side are statistically different. Okay, so low and high are different. I can see that none and high are different and I can immediately see that medium and low are different and none and medium are different. And I can see that none and low and medium and high are not different. So this is just a different way to look at the exact same idea, but here it allows you to decipher it quicker than looking at numbers. You can just come down here and go, oh, medium and high are not different, uh, none and low are not different. Okay, they're not different. Move on on. Okay, so this gives us a way to look to see where differences exist inside of an ANOVA. Now there's other ways as well, which we'll talk about in our next video, but remember that whenever you're doing ANOVA, the first thing you do is an ANOVA test to find out if differences exist. Once you know they exist, then you can go looking for them. If you don't know they, or you don't find that they exist, then don't keep looking. All right, so now we can move on to the next video.